So amidst the myriad of films, short films, video logs, podcasts, showing up on other people's podcasts, general everyday life stuff. Uh, here's one more thing, uh, a little supplemental series, I guess, for my full price for late pizza podcast, which you can check out on Spotify, Apple Music, I'm sure many other platforms I ended up signing up to for distribution without really knowing it. Uh, yeah, check that out. It's a TMNT based podcast uh, where I delve into my TMNT fandom because that is going strong well into my old age here. This is kind of what this video series is going to be about, the extra slices, if you will, because my podcast, which has been going for about a year now, and I've got a whole of nine going on 10 episodes, yay. Uh, <laughs> sometimes there's stuff that you just gotta show off visually. And I figured that would be an opportunity to show off the many TMNT collectibles I've acquired in my lifetime, ranging from maybe some of the classic toys or DVDs or videos to more contemporary stuff. And I figured what better way to kick off this series than talking about one of my most prized set of TMNT figures, my original 1984 NECA Ninja Turtles. Now I use NECA in strong quotation marks because these guys might look and act like the you know OG TMNT NECA figures but they are not. These guys they're knockoffs from China and while as much as I'd like to advocate for being able to go out there and support the original company and stuff getting those original figures Two things with regards to these ones especially. One, the original Mirage NECA Turtles are pretty hard to come by these days. And with good reason too, because they go for hundreds, <laughs> hundreds of dollars. Whereas these guys, when I picked them up, went for, I think about, for all four of them, 150. And for 150 bucks for these four dudes, you get a pretty good deal, even though they aren't the original NECA figures. Pretty much, these guys are very indistinguishable from uh, the original NECA figures. They may have just been made in the same factory off the books with different materials. From what I understand, the original NECA turtles, and I might throw up some pictures here for comparisons, uh, they have a bit of a not as shiny finish to them as these guys have. They're not as glossy or the shade of green might be drastically different and there's other things I'll get into with overall the body sculpt and the articulation uh, that I've heard is very different as well. But ultimately they, they're, these guys are pretty much a dead on match for the original neck of figures. Like they scale pretty much the same, uh, same points of articulation for the most part. They're on par, from what I've seen in pictures, on par with the originals. Uh, even with the accessories, uh, while maybe perhaps the uh, weapons and stuff aren't as, maybe not as detailed or as uh, well polished as the originals are, they, they do the job. So as you can see, each turtle has a very kind of distinct uh, look about them that I feel is true to their character. You've got Raphael here with his grrr. I'm angry at the world look. Michelangelo, of course, has his more carefree, sort of a little bit of a goofier look on his face, but I think it works uh, for this version of the character. Donatello is very stoic, pensive almost. Uh, no teeth showing. He's clearly working some stuff out in the old turtle noggin. And of course, my favorite, Leo well-balanced uh, all in all, I think, between the four brothers. Just kind of mm, ready for action, not as overzealous as Raph, not as lackadaisical as Mikey, not as overcomplicated as Donnie, just right there in the middle. Yeah, I know, I picked the most 
run of the mill average character is my favorite. Sue me. I like the feel of them. They got a good weight to them. They got a good look to them. The paint applications, for the most part, I think I got a good deal on paint applications. It, these bootleggers, whoever they are out there, uh, you did a great job with this set at least. I know maybe perhaps there have been some sets uh, that people have gotten of the knockoffs that had a more lackluster kind of paint quality to them. Maybe part of it is because this set of turtles was also being distributed with the multicolor headbands uh, and maybe perhaps that played a role in paint quality issues. I'm not entirely sure, but if you got to apply different colors for everyone except Raphael, you might have some splotching here and there. These guys, I, I just decided to go with traditional tried and true red bandanas for everybody because the distinctive looks, if I were to lose the weapons, well for starters, Leo can't get rid of his holsters for his katanas or his swords, uh, so he stands out automatically. And then Raph, Donnie, and Mike each have a very distinct look about them that you can tell who's who if you're very familiar with the characters, which I am. So clearly, Raphael is the one who doesn't look pissed off. What? The details actually are pretty great. There's this cool, I don't know if you can see it on here on the shelf. You know, what the hell, I'll have some inserts in the actual light box that I'm using to light myself right now. I'll have uh, some inserts here so you can see the details a little bit better on these guys. But they have the cool kind of early issues of Eastman and Laird with the kind of rough sketch kind of feel to, rough sketch and uh, cross hatching kind of feel to their, um, to their outlines, uh, especially on the shells. They're very, got a very grimy kind of look to them, which works. And I think, especially since these are the uh, knockoffs, they, the darker or glossier kind of green can work for that more subterranean feel. You will believe these guys kind of crawled out of a sewer, but they're not grotty and gross. They just have a murkier quality to them that I kind of love. My figures overall are still in pretty good condition. I've had these guys for about I want to say 10 years now. Ordered them on an eBay a long time ago uh, when I first moved out here. And they arrived in really good condition. They didn't arrive in packaging with like backboards and you know plastic shell and stuff. They arrived in little plastic tubes, which I was trying to find one of the plastic tubes for to show you what they came in. Uh, but I must have gotten rid of those or they are lost somewhere in my mess of an apartment. Yeah, not the most elaborate packaging, but from what I understand, some of the original NECA figures came in a similar type of tube uh, package, so I'm not too upset about that overall, especially if I'm just taking them out to display them anyways. Now, what makes me believe that these guys came from the original factory is on the bottom of their feet, they still have the kind of NECA trademark uh, imprint on there. So what makes me think is that some people went in after hours and uh, filled out the molds with their own with their own materials, um, just so they could be able to make a more affordable set to profit off of. And I'm sorry, NECA, I apologize, but these dudes are rare and expensive, the originals anyway, and I have supported you, as you'll find out in other episodes, by filling out the rest of the Mirage set with actual NECA figures, so. I think, I think it all balanced out. You know, I get to have these guys, but then the rest of the assorted turtles cast from the Mirage comics, those will be NECA. The joints on some of these guys are a little loose, but not to the point that I fear I'm going to clip an arm off or something if I bend it too far or anything. They're just, they're just looser than probably is standard for NECA, which is fine because sometimes NECAs are a little hard to move the joints around the first time like you need to really heat them up in order to get the in order to get certain points of articulation a little bit more malleable the tails actually <laughs> the tails or that is a tail i assure you they, they they rotate and stuff like that from what i understand with the bootlegs and this seems to apply to mine is there's two distinct things about them that differentiates them from the originals one is the front shell or the front carapace of the turtle Apparently on the NECAs, on the original ones, it's a lot more bendable. Like you can actually like just like bend it down. And I guess the reason why is that there is an ab joint in these guys that you can use so you can kind of make them hunch over a little bit more and that way the front shell, you know, bends with it a little bit easier. Here on these guys, the um, 
the front shell is very stiff. This, if anything, that's what I'm, the one thing I'm not gonna try to test the limits of is the front shell because it's a very stiff uh, type of plastic there and doesn't have a lot of give to it. I feel could actually like break off at some point. That makes me believe that the ab joint in this one in these figures is pretty much non-existent, which is fine because I don't really think the turtles really need that much of an ab joint in their setup. I do have a couple of figures that I'll get to eventually that do have ab joints in them uh, from other lines, the Playmates line, for example, and it kind of looks goofy to have the turtles shells sort of bisected like that were, you know, in two separate components like that. I don't know. Uh, when we get around to those figures, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about it. But on these guys, I don't mind that they don't have a hunch over feature because you can actually spread out their legs pretty far that they can get into like a squat. They can get into like a battle ready stance that looks really dynamic. They fit on most flight stands or they're able to be supported for the most part on a lot of the flight stands I do have. So if you want like a shot of, say, Raphael in the air with a flying kick, it's doable on these guys. Just enough uh, body and weight to them without feeling too heavy. One thing I have noticed, and I can't remember if this is how he arrived or this is just natural wear and tear on the figure throughout the years and I haven't just been paying attention, is Donatello's belt buckle. It has a little bit of a, a crease or a little bit of a stressor point in it, in his, um, in the flaps of his, uh, of his belt there. And I can't remember if that's how he came or if that's just, at one point I was just fiddling around with the belt buckle or the, the belt application and ended up like causing that. But otherwise, I love these figures. They are really kind of cool and dynamic. Again, I really fell in love with the original Eastman and Laird run of comics after being exposed to the uh, Saturday morning cartoon and discovering that, oh, these guys are actually a lot more dark and more violent than they are originally portrayed in Saturday morning. So being able to kind of see their origins and to have a really awesome physical representation in figure form of those early incarnations of turtles. Yeah, it's they're a joy to have. I love these guys. I've had them in a couple of the videos here on youtube.com slash Mike McGee TV. Hey, Brand Synergy. They've been featured in some of my earlier shorts, if you will, uh, where they cross over with, I think, the Predator and Batman and my NECA alien up here somewhere. Great for like toy photography. Whenever I do like a promo for the Full Price for Late Pizza podcast, these are sometimes the main guys that I work with. It's either them or my Super 7s. They provide some great dynamic shots to hopefully get you hooked into my next episode. And like I said, even though these aren't the original NECAs, uh, because they, the originals, good luck trying to find the full set and or buy them at a reasonable price, because that doesn't exist. Uh, they at least are very compatible with the new waves of NECA turtle figures Mirage turtle figures that are coming out. As you can see here in these shots, I've built on my Mirage collection by incorporating characters like Casey Jones and Fugitoid and Renette and Ooptrom and stuff like that. Whether or not I'll keep collecting, who's to say? I know there's supposed to be a more Mirage accurate Splinter coming out soon or is out. Uh, from what I understand, he's kind of a pipsqueak compared to these guys, but who knows? I might get him. I kind of like my old playmate Splinter being displayed with him. He's, I feel, the right size and the right kind of style aesthetic to go perfectly with this line of uh, characters. If you can get your hands on some of these good quality knockoffs that I'm, you know, 80%, 80 to 85 to, okay, 80 to 85 to 90% sure they were made in the same factory as the originals, then yeah, absolutely. And like I said, there is the option going that you can get them with the multicolored headbands. Yeah, these guys have stood the test of time for going on a decade now with me and you'll see them more often on the Instagram. Uh, I guess I'll use my typical kind of rating scale when it comes to turtle media on the podcast, which is out of an eight slice uh, pizza. These guys, I'd say, I seem to be doing this quite often. I'd say they're a solid seven, 7.5 slices out of eight. I gotta take off, I guess a half point or a point just because they aren't the original models, but you know what? They serve 
equally as well. I think that's the sign of still some care and quality going into the product, even if it is a knockoff or bootleg. Let me know in the comments below or, you know, through Instagram or whatever, if you all have a set of these guys or if you have the originals, what are some key differences do you think between these guys and uh, their homegrown NECA brothers? So until next time, Enjoy your extra slices or something. I don't know. Yeah, turtles.